John Roebling Bridge opened in 1866. It was the longest suspension bridge in the world. It was later overtaken by John A. Roebling's most famous design of the 1883 Brooklyn Bridge. They're very similar in design. Pedestrians use the bridge to get between the sports venues in Cincinnati, which include the Paul Brown Stadium, the Great American Ballpark, and U.S. Bank Arena. And then on the Kentucky side, the hotels, bars, restaurants, and parking lots. And that's in Northern Kentucky. And this area is named the Roebling Point. On the Kentucky side, there is a coffee house named the Roebling Cafe. It was the original office of John A. Roebling while the bridge was being constructed. I've been there, it's awesome. The John A. Roebling Bridge has been an iconic landmark over the Ohio River for more than 150 years. The bridge is an engineering marvel that employed several new bridge building techniques. Its most impressive features are the two primary cables, each containing 5,180 individual wires. The cables were spun in place using wire imported from England. A second set of cables was added in 1897 to support heavier loads. Although the Roebling shares the riverfront with several other bridges today, it remains a major route for pedestrians and vehicles. The Ohio River runs southwesterly from western Pennsylvania south of Lake Erie to the Mississippi River at the southern tip of Illinois. The river flows through or along the border of six states. It is the source of drinking water for three million people. The name Ohio comes from the Seneca, Ohio, meaning good river. Seneca is the language of the Seneca people, one of the six nations of the Iroquois League. For thousands of years, Native Americans used the river as a major transportation and trading route. The waters of the Ohio River connected communities. In the late 18th century, the river was the southern boundary of the Northwest Territory. It became a primary transportation route for pioneers during the westward expansion of the early U.S. At that time, travel on the Ohio was mostly one way, downriver. River traffic changed when the first western steamboat named the New Orleans made its maiden voyage in 1811. Boats moved much faster downriver, but with the arrival of the steamboat, upriver was now more practical. Trading boats and ships traveled south on the Mississippi to the New Orleans, and sometimes beyond to the Gulf of Mexico and other ports in the Americas and Europe. Before and during the Civil War, the Ohio River was called the River Jordan by slaves crossing it to escape to freedom in the north via the Underground Railroad. If you visit Cincinnati, you will find perched on the north bank of the Ohio River, the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, which celebrates freedom's heroes from the era of the Underground Railroad to contemporary times, complete with inspiring stories and hands-on activities. Now, coal was mined from Pittsburgh. The demand for regular coal delivery led to the development of the towboat. Towboats are still used today to push barges along the inland. This is what you see here, a barge moving what appears to be piles of coal. 
This was a perfect event while I was here today. This portion of the video has been sped up. This barge is moving extremely slow. The John A. Roebling Bridge was used while filming Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise when they drove out of Cincinnati with Raymond. Many folks have filmed crossing this bridge and humming as Raymond did in the movie. And you can find a lot of them on YouTube. This is amazing. I have never seen this before. It's a bike channel and you put your wheels in this channel and you can uh, just walk your bike up and down. It goes all the way down. There's like three or four levels. I've never seen this before and I was amazed. That's the ones I use. <laughs> so I'm just going to get the regular bowl of chili. Seems appropriate. I want to do the regular, the original. Here's the cup. 
cook for you. We can share in a restaurant too. Cheers. Are you ready? I am. What would you like? Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to get the regular, the loaded chili bowl. Okay. Cheers. It's a popular place. Lots of chitter chatter. Can you hear it? I'm going to leave it in. I think you can hear me okay. So when it comes, yay. So now's a good time to chit chat while I'm waiting for the food to come. As a child, the founder of Skyline Chili, Nicholas Lambrinidis, watched and learned as his mother lovingly prepared her unique family recipes in their hometown of at Castoria, Greece. He marveled at the magic of blend of flavors and dreamed of one day sharing her culinary delights with the world. Well, opportunity knocked when the family moved to America. They settled in the bustling Midwestern town of Cincinnati, Ohio. And in 1949, Nicholas realized his dream when he opened the doors of his first restaurant, perched atop Price Hill, on the city's west side. His view of the downtown cityscape inspired the name and Skyline Chili was born. Skyline Chili. Oh, it's here. Any hot sauce? No, thank you. Okay, here we go. Let's see this. Here we go. Let me make sure I don't have anything in my teeth. The one two ingredients I definitely taste because I've done a lot of baking and cooking and I'm I'm pretty um, up and up on uh, spices and herbs. Um, there's all spice and nutmeg in here. It's very subtle, but it's it, I think that's what gives it its um, uniqueness. Well, I'm going to continue. That's a lot of cheese on there. Wow. A lot of cheese. Okay, well, I'm going to eat my chili. Judiah Hill Covered Bridge is a historic bridge near Cincinnati, Ohio. It was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. The wooden covered bridge was built in 1850. Looks like we got some wasps nest. Ooh, a lot of them. <laughs> Look at all those wasps nests up there. Oh yeah.
Obed Hussey was an inventor and he invented the reaper machine for agriculture. He was in Maryland, but it made it an unsuitable location for a field trial. So when the machine was ready, Hussey took it to Ohio. He had a supporter in Cincinnati who provided both financing and manufacturing facilities. Working in Cincinnati during the winter of 1832 to 33, Hussey rebuilt his reaping machine there, completing it in time for harvest of 1833. This bridge is maintained well because there's a residential area here that uses it every day. In case you haven't received your own copy. Well, this is not for resale. This is my copy. <laughs> but in case you haven't received your copy of How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Leeway, go to Amazon. I'll leave the links in the comments. It's also in the video description. Yes. Good information, lots of lists if you're not a nomad. And this will help you get started. This is really the how to get started, how to get from A to in your minivan. It's not an encyclopedia about nomad life. It's got some goodies in here, but this is how you get going. This is how you can get from A to Z stress-free, getting in a minivan and starting the lifestyle. Now, if you're already a nomad, yeah, I get it. Why would you need all this information? You're already out there. Well, I've had so many people say, how can I support you? Put a PayPal up, Patreon, whatever. What's your address? I want to send you things. I want to support you. Well, I would rather give you something and this way you can support me. The ebook is there too. And you can support me this way. So I wrote you a book. Here you go. This is my little plug. This is my little commercial. Isn't it gorgeous? I don't know if you know it. There's a whole community here. They use this bridge every day. It's very sturdy. How cool every day to like go to work and go in, across the covered bridge. Wow. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay. So here's my book. Book. Yeah. Get your copy. This is where the old and the new meet in Cincinnati. I've mentioned that many times about Cincinnati. It's an old city, but it's contemporary. They've kept up and they've preserved a lot of the older things, the historical things, they've preserved them. Way to go, Cincinnati.